So here we are uh, hanging out at the uh, Cocoon Gallery. <laughs> <laughs> it's Bill and me. <laughs> Greetings. Greetings. This is Cocoon Arts Gallery in Cleveland, Ohio. There you go. Welcome. Yeah. All right, here we are at the Cocoon Gallery in Cleveland, Ohio, William Sheely's wonderful establishment. And, and this is part of a show that I'm in, and we're going to be talking about this mandala right here, which is entitled Swastika Counter-Rotational Fractal. That word actually is Sanskrit, and it means to be with one, to be united with one. And uh, it's a really powerful symbol. But Adolf Hitler, who was a serious metaphysician, studying the Aryan histories, got into all the esoteric stuff and found this form. And he was marveled at the power, the strength of the graphic itself, this swastika shape. And he lifted it right out of the spiritual uh, esoteric aspects of Eastern philosophies and corrupted it by associating with his, his uh, insane uh, grasp for power. And uh, consequently, that beautiful form has taken on this uh, very negative energy. And so my idea, being the alchemist that I am, I said, this is really a beautiful form. If you can step over your own prejudice, step over your own symbolic uh, triggers and really see it for what it is and uh, maybe I can restore some energy to this fantastically beautiful aspect of sacred geometry by doing a completely new kind of mandala based on a swastika so that was it it's an alchemical experiment and it's a, an attempt to change the energy of the uh, uh, accursed swastika into the beautiful swastika that was the idea. It's a real alchemical idea. Huh? Okay. So I wanted to take this swastika form and I wanted to trace back into sacred geometry archetypes to see where it actually came from. And it does come out of the uh, four squares. So there's four squares uh, that are boxed together in another square. And that's basically how you can uh, create a, uh, a swastika. But it's also four overlapping circles at the same time. And that's why it has this relationship. It has this relationship to uh, rotation. So this first level, this first level is rotating, which is what I saw in my meditations when I first started to uh, meditate on the graphic itself, I felt this rotation. But then I also perceived that it could also go, be going the other way. And so the next level out here is, is rotating the other way. And that's why the title reads uh, Swastika Counter-Rotational Fractal, which, because that's what it is. And it's a fractal also because this form, if you notice these petals right here, these petals are a certain uh, radius, and this uh, uh, next petal here is exactly twice as long as this one, and the next one is exactly twice as long as that one, which is right here, or right here, and they, you can symbolize it by seeing it as going counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, simultaneously. So it's a tremendously dynamic a tremendously dynamic graphic. And that spinning quality was part of the allure that was always felt. And that dynamic was translated graphically into power and motion and vitality and force and uh, you know all these wonderful dynamic qualities, which is exactly what Nazism took advantage of. They were very dynamic, very aggressive, and very, even, even, this, even the marches were so bold and so uh, aggressive, you know? So the whole philosophy uh, lined up with this, this 
energy in this piece, which was corrupted. Uh, you know, this, this is an evil in itself, but somehow the association, our human symbolism, we put this energy on it. We allowed this energy to be put onto it, and it soaked into our subconscious, and now we're, we're trying to heal that. So this is another healing kind of an idea. Uh, and, and, and that's primarily one of the major things that happens for me in my production of mandalas. It's always growing, healing, nurturing, uh, wonderful and uh, spiritually grounding energies. Huh? Also, too, I want to say another thing about this piece. Right now, we're looking at this piece in what's known as a dynamic position. Because when you take a square and you turn it on its corner like this, it's considered, uh, it's in its dynamic position. That's the, the term, the geometric term. And when you take the same square and you rotate it 45 degrees, then you put it in its static position. And it, this, this mandala was created to be seen uh, in both ways. But right now, we're showing it like this because uh, I really like it like this. I went through so much, um, so much time developing this image, and it wasn't until the very last week of the painting, until I found these horizontal uh, lines, or I, I applied these horizontal lines in here, at the last in the last week's work. So it was about four months' work, and in the last week, I finally realized that I had missed this, this uh, balancing, stabilizing energy, which gave the center part even more dynamic. So that addition was the, really the big key from the, uh, from, uh, from the artistic point of view. It made the painting work much better the way I actually saw it. And I'm, 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 I'm very uh, I'm pleased with the piece. I think it is. It's a genuine uh, attempt at alchemy to turn the negativity associated with the swastika and turn it around and make it, turn it back into what it was intended to be in the first place. Something really powerful and really high beyond the petty evilness that we're capable of creating as human beings. And this isn't the first piece I've done like this. This isn't the first piece. I did another piece recently, last year, called Prayer for Peace, based on the energies of the Middle East. And I took the Islamic crescent, the Jewish Star of David, the pagan cross, which preceded the Christian cross, and put them all into one mandala and tried to unify that energy so that it had a, a beautiful feeling of balance. And the prayer was to... Uh, you know, to recognize the brotherhood of man in this painting and say, hey, we're, you know, can't we all just get along? We're all coming from the same place and all these great religions, they're all pointing to the same place. It all comes back to unity, unity. It's an illusion that we're separate. We are, we are not really enemies, you know? And that is my whole uh, energy I'm trying to work with to to bring some kind of civility into my thinking and into my life. And I'm so much happier because of it. And that's why I do this stuff that I do. 